If you look in your electrical panel, the most common circuit breaker that you most likely will find is 120 volt, 20 amp breakers. But then if you go around your house and look at all the different outlets, you might see that these are actually 15 amp outlets. So how does that actually make sense? And specifically, let's touch on a few items. First, is that code compliant? What does the code say? What does the code allow? Two, what about from a safety or fire hazard standpoint? Just inherently having 15 amp components on a 20 amp circuit seems like that wouldn't be a good idea. And then number three and our final item is what kind of appliance actually is going to pull more than 15 amps or what are the different scenarios you need to look out for? We have our 20 amp circuit. I'm assuming you have 12 gauge wire running throughout that circuit. And then the question is what does code say for 15 or 20 amp receptacles or what I usually call outlets? Specifically, you wanna reference NEC 210.21B or if you're like me, maybe you have something like the Black & Decker Complete Guide to Wiring. This one specifically is over about 10 years old. You can see that with the DVD that was included at the time, but is pretty much of no use now. But Black & Decker does update. This is the latest. Every three years when NEC updates, so does the Complete Guide. And if you look below all of our videos, you'll see the link to our Amazon store, which is the complete and always updated list of tools, supplies, and reference materials like the Black & Decker Complete Guide to Wiring. In the electrical section, if you scroll past all the Wago lever nuts, which you know I highly recommend, you will find this complete guide. And for under $20, you can either get a paperback like I have, or you can get the Kindle version for even less. So just like 210.21B on page 93, three of the Black & Decker Complete Guide, it reads, use either 15 or 20 amp receptacles on 20 amp circuits with multiple receptacles. And that multiple receptacles is key. If you had a 20 amp circuit, only one receptacle, that would need to be 20 amp. Other than that, when you have multiple receptacles, you can use 15 or 20 amp and you're gonna be meeting code. Moving on to that second item, and that is just from a safety or overloading standpoint. 15 amp component on a 20 amp circuit, sounds like that would be an issue. And this is the most common feedback I'll get from the audience is that you would not want to do that because it's going to be overloaded. That's the most common feedback I get. So let's expand on that a little bit. From a baseline perspective, if you've seen some of my older content, you know I've actually opened up a lot of different outlets and yeah, I'm switching back to using outlets opposed to receptacles. I've looked at residential grade, I've looked at commercial grade, I've looked at multiple levels into industrial and into even audiophile, like the highest, most expensive type of outlet out there. I've looked at different brands, Eaton, Leviton, Legrand, and even Hubble. And the one thing that I've learned from that is a residential grade outlet like this, a 15 amp residential grade outlet, I do not use. These are the cheapest. These are in most new homes. That is what most builders and even some professionals, if you don't request specifically, they're gonna use the cheapest stuff, which is a residential grade 15 amp outlet. I don't use that, even though that 15 amp would be allowed by code, I don't think it's a smart decision. For an extra dollar or dollar 50, or maybe just a little bit more per outlet, you should step up to the commercial grade. So let's look at an example from Legrand comparing their 15 amp to the 20 amp commercial grade outlet and show you why I do not think it's a safety hazard or a fire hazard to use 15 amp outlets in a 20 amp circuit. So here's an example of a 15 amp and a 20 amp Legrand commercial grade. I've just taken the pins out of the back yokes here so I can pop off these fronts so we can see internally what's going on. Now, I've looked at a couple of these over the years, specifically from this brand, uh, and things actually changed just a little bit, but this still holds true that in terms of the thickness of the overall internals, uh, the isolation with the non-metallics between your hot and neutral sides, so this would be your hot side, your hot prong coming in, your neutral prong, and your ground, your side screw terminals, your plates in there if you're using back wiring. So this being the 20 amp, this being your 15 amp, there's just not enough difference. There has been actually a little bit of cost reduction. You'll see on this neutral side here, a small piece of metal was removed for the 15 amp, which was not needed. The interesting thing is that's actually changed a little bit. This one's uh, about a year and a half old, and this actually 
was a 15 amp Legrand, exactly the same model as this. Um, and it was a mirror image of the 20. Absolutely nothing different between the two designs. Uh, so even though it looks like we have done a little cost reduction, which makes sense from a manufacturer, the input costs have went up. So how do you keep the price the same? Well, you strip it down a little bit. So this is similar to what I've seen in other brands that these internals on the 15 amp side are just not gonna be more prone to failure compared to the 20 amp. That's just my opinion. And from what I've seen, looking at the materials used, the thickness and the overall design. So that second item, from my opinion, I do not think a 15 amp is a fire hazard, especially if you follow the same approach I do and use only commercial grade. Now, what appliances would actually use more than 15 amps, right? Go up to that 20 amp capability. And honestly, it's not that common. You could have some appliances around your kitchen or the two things that I've seen in the past and dealt with is a 120 volt air conditioner through the window air conditioner, more than 18,000 BTU of capacity. And that one did have a 20 amp plug on it. I don't know if that's even common these days, but today what I run into is every once in a while when I rent an electric jackhammer to break out a concrete driveway or some sidewalk, that jackhammer might have a 20 amp plug like this where you actually do have the horizontal neutral prong which would only allow it to go into a 20 amp outlet. And the thing I would look out for is some of those jackhammers do come with a converter that converts that 20 amp plug into something that could go into a 15 amp plug, such as this little converter would allow you to do. So you could take your 20 amp plug, you could place that within this converter, and now you can take an appliance or something that would actually draw more than 15 amps or has the potential to, and then you plug that into a 15 amp outlet. Now you still have a 20 amp breaker, you still have 12 gauge wire running throughout your circuit, and if you use commercial grade, you're probably not gonna have any issues because the internals are actually the same. I would just say that's not best practice, and for most homeowners, you're really not gonna run into this scenario very often, if ever. So those are the three items, and now hopefully you have a lot more information, you're more educated when it comes to 15 and 20 amp outlets on a 20 amp circuit. And before you take off, don't forget to subscribe to our channel. It's been over 100 videos since I've asked you to subscribe to the channel, but only about 6% of our viewers are subscribed. And once you subscribe, you're gonna be more likely to see other videos within the 300 video library we have on YouTube, and we continue to add to on a weekly basis. Now, if you wanna dive deeper between residential and commercial grade outlets, check out this video right here. That was kind of the start of me looking internally to these components and what helped me inform my decisions over time. So thanks for joining me on this video and we'll catch you on that next one. Take care.